Hi guys, I'm Nivet. Today I'm I have a really special project that I want to show you. So it it has been it had been a, like a childhood dream for me to build a Lego train track that goes around my room, right? I mean it would have been everyone everyone's dream when they were young. So nearly after 20 years I some, uh, I managed to build one that goes around my room by having my trains close to the ceiling there was a problem you know I have to charge it I have to turn on the powered up hub so there were these complications so to address that I made my own charging station the charging station will be connected along the tracks and the, my train I have redesigned it to have a pantograph um, when the train goes uh, under the charging station, the charging station will be connected to a, a power supply or a battery charger. And from the grounds, from below, I can basically, with the click of a button, I can charge my train. Some of you will be wondering why I did not use the 9 volt Lego train tracks. Yes, that's actually a good way to go about it, but it's really expensive. I checked out a, a train 9 volt motor, it was about $60, $70, that's a lot of money. Uh, then again, a normal motor for the powered up pub is around $12, $13, yeah, anyway, and the tracks also cost significantly higher than plastic tracks. And also I've already invested in this, and going further, I don't want to justify why I chose this, but then again, I, uh, my main uh, point of this video is to actually show you this uh, pantograph design and the charging station. My charging station will have three power cables on top. One for positive and the other one, another one for negative. And there's another one to turn on the powered up power. So these are the three lines. By short circuiting the switch line, that's what I named it. So it is connected to the switch of the power up power with the positive terminal of the uh, battery, I can turn the power up on. If I were to automate it, I can basically program this uh, power up up using the pie bricks and I can have a some a colored tile close to the, somewhere close to the charging station and I can have my train stop. The train will have a color sensor that I'll, can connect somewhere down here if I remove this. And uh, so I can basically have the train come stop, charge, keep going. This is the charger I got off AliExpress. There's a similar one on Amazon as well. It's around $30 to $50 depending on uh, wherever you live. And I'm not sure about how much shipping will worry, but then again, this can charge nickel, I mean, pretty much all the batteries out there. And it'll auto detect the number of um, AAA batteries I have in my powered up pub and it's start charging. I'll show all this later in the video. I just want to make the intro really quick. And believe me, it's this, and I mean, I, the entire video is about five and a half hours and I managed to cramp it to like 15, 20 minutes because I just wanted to share whatever I did with you all and like, you know, help you all if you all ever were to build something like this. Uh, the production quality is not that great, but this is my first video and uh, I spent a lot of time on my project. I was enjoying it so much, I wasn't actually bothered about uh, look, uh, like working on the video much. But I've written a great uh, blog, I hope it's good. Um, so I have everything on that and I'll be linking timestamps to this video from the blog. So I should suggest you all watch the, I'm uh, sorry, go through the blog and um, refer the video as a guide to help you. Or you can even watch the video if you're a, a visual, uh, like a visual person, yeah? That's a short introduction, so I hope you all um, enjoy this and uh, like and follow, and like and subscribe.
first off take the batteries out then unscrew this four screws using a T6 screwdriver and then you can also use that screwdriver to pop off the circuit board from within the powered up hub and after that you can see me soldering in the plus and minus terminals I'm also gonna solder in the switch cable so this will be used to turn on the powered up hub and you can see all three soldered on perfectly. I had to drill a couple of holes on my powered up hub, the top, uh, top part of the casing, to pull out the wires. And then you should carefully uh, close back your powered up hub. And you can see here I'm short circuiting the plus terminal and the switch cable to turn on the powered up hub. These will be connected to my pantograph as you see here. I'll be soldering it as shown. So make sure to sand off the tips of the copper coil um, that's on the pantograph. There are three of them before soldering the wires onto it. Once you have soldered everything together, put back everything properly. Make sure there aren't any wires extending and coming out of the train. You don't want them to get caught to some uh, thing on the track and you know come off. And you can see after I've done the soldering, I'm using my multimeter to check the voltage and see if everything is connected properly and that I'm receiving power up to my pantograph. So I have the brass tubes over here. I just measured out the track length I'll be needing to install that specific uh, tube. After that, I'm placing my lattices or the stands or poles to construct the charging station. Next, I'm uh, placing the brass tubes exactly on top of the pantograph's three terminals so that they align and when the train moves along, there's perfect contact with the pantograph and the brass tubes. And in my hand, I have the one millimeter thick copper lacquer wire. So I'll be cutting a couple of pieces, about three to four centimeters in length, uh, six pieces to be exact. And I'll be using two pieces of copper uh, wire to hold the brass tubes up on the charging station. I've mentioned uh, this clearly on my blog, so I recommend you check that out so it's much clearer. Since I need both ends of the brass tube slightly bent, I'm using a clamp here and slightly pushing the brass tube front so you can do that for all your tubes. I'm using a saw to cut one side of the brass tube about maybe 0.5 millimeters or so into the brass tube. As you know, the brass tube is hollow. So once you cut in a bit, it'll you can see the inside of the brass tube. Then I'll take my copper wire pieces that I cut previously and I'll put one of it inside and bend the brass tube from both ends slightly, not to you know deform it, but in a way that the copper wire that I ins inserted uh, sort of gets sealed in between, right? So you can't easily pull it off. You can further seal the joint by applying some solder lead and heating it up. So I've installed one of the brass tubes to the charging station. I made a small adjustment to the 1x2 lift arm. I just cut it, in a, uh, cut it a bit in the middle, if you can see there exactly. And this helps me to pull the copper cable through it and bend it from the top so that the brass tube floats on the charging station.
can see the top part of those coils banded off. This basically improves conductivity between the brass tube and the pantagraph. train is not connected to the charging station. I'm gonna try to start charge it now. So it shows there's a connection error. I stop that. Stop. And now as soon as I as soon as the train comes into the charging station, you can see the red light blink, meaning we have contact. And uh, now I'm going to charge the train batteries you can see this is the charging indicator so as soon as I sorry start and it starts charging